In the previous example, when we derived our work expression from our kinematics laws, we said that the net force um, delta Fx was already along the x direction. But what happens if you have some force that's not actually along the x direction? As an example, say we have a crate and you're pushing it, but you're pushing it down and to the right. So your force on this crate is down and to the right, whereas the crate is sliding across the floor horizontally. So this diagonal force is not along the x direction, and yet we still want to be able to figure out how much work you're doing on the crate from this force. So in order to figure that out, we have to understand something called the dot product. And to give you a little background, why do we need a new thing? Why do we need this new operator called a dot product? So we know about force. It's a vector quantity. It has a strength and a direction. Displacement is also a vector quantity that has a magnitude, like how far did you go, and a direction. And we want to multiply these two things together and get a number that is a kind of energy transfer, right, change in energy, which is a scalar. Energy doesn't have a direction. So how do we take two vector things and combine them together and get something that has no direction? The dot product is a special operator that lets us multiply vectors and get out a scalar. And here's how it works. When you take the dot product of a vector with another vector, you have the strength of the first vector, or the magnitude, like how, how long the arrow is, basically, times the magnitude of the next vector, multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. So what we're saying is only, if we rearrange this, right, if we say f cosine theta, where theta is this angle between them, theta is this angle, so if we say f cosine theta is the part we're interested in, and then we've got this distance, this is like choosing the dot product picks out the parallel part of the force. So only the part of the force that's along the direction the object is moving is going to cause any change in the box's energy. The part that's perpendicular doesn't do anything. Okay, so let me remind you a few things about cosine theta. I'm going to do it on the next page. So if we are pushing to the right and our box is displacing to the right, Here's our displacement. The angle between these two things is zero. Okay, now we know that if we push in the same direction the thing is moving, our acceleration will be to the right and it will get faster, right? We should get faster. That should mean we should have positive working done on the system, but let's check if that's true. Cosine of zero degrees is equal to positive one. So that means our working, which will be the strength of our force times the distance it goes, times the cosine of zero degrees, which is one, this thing is one, so that's gonna be a positive number, and that's what it should be. Now what happens if we push opposite to the direction of the force, or if the object is moving in the opposite direction from our force, like we're trying to stop a shopping cart or something. So these two vectors are actually 180 degrees apart. You can kind of see that if you do this. So I put the tails together. Then our angle is 180 degrees. So anti-parallel, we would call this. Can you tell school just got out? If, if the things are anti-parallel, the angle is 180 degrees, and the cosine of 180 degrees is minus one. Okay, so that means the working would be, the working would be the magnitude of the force times the distance that it traveled times the cosine of 180, which would be negative one. Okay, so this working would be negative, 
And as we expect, if we push the opposite direction to the direction something's going, that's negative acceleration and it should get slower. So we should have negative work. Finally, let's consider a situation where the angle between the applied force and the displacement is 90 degrees. Um, so a common example of this is if you're walking across the room and you're carrying something like a waiter, right? If a waiter is carrying a tray with a bunch of glasses or something or food on it, right? They're bringing you your drinks at a restaurant. Um, so their force, that looks like a birthday cake. Their force on the tray is up like this. And the gravitational force on the tray is down. But the displacement of the tray as they walk across the room is like this. Okay, so we expect that these forces won't change the speed of the tray because they're just keeping the tray supported so that it doesn't accelerate towards the floor. And so if we think about the work that your force does on the tray, or the waiter's force does on the tray, um, if we write an expression for the work of the waiter, it's equal to the absolute value of the force they're exerting on the tray, that's probably like the tray's weight, times the distance that they travel with the tray, times the cosine of the angle between these two forces, which would be 90 degrees. And if you remember from your trig, cosine of 90 degrees is zero. Okay, so that cosine 90 is zero, which means the waiter themselves do no work on the tray. Similarly, if you look at the gravitational force on the tray, that's also at a 90 degree angle. Um, so the gravitational force of the earth on the tray is also zero. Okay, so we're gonna do an example problem. This is problem two, uh, which includes figure problem 10.2. Um, the two ropes seen are used to lower a 255 kilogram piano exactly five meters from a second story window to the ground. How much work is done by each of the three forces? So we have this, I'm gonna redraw some of this picture. We have a tension force. Yeah, the notation in the book is kind of goofy. We have another tension force. And we have the weight force. This is the force of gravity from the earth on the piano. Okay. So, and we know some things about angles. This is a 60 degree angle. This is a 45 degree angle. And we also have strengths. Okay. So I guess I'll recopy them so I don't have to look in weird places. Okay. So we're going to take this thing and we, the piano, and we are going to displace it down towards the ground like this. Okay, so this is our displacement. So um, I'm gonna calculate the work done by each of these forces individually. So the easiest one is the work done by the weight. Okay, so for that force, the angle between the force and the displacement is zero degrees. And therefore, the work done by Earth on the piano is equal to the magnitude of the force. So that would be 2,500 newtons. It doesn't have a sign anyway. The magnitude of the displacement, which is 5 meters. And then the cosine of 0 degrees, which is 1. So if we multiply these things together, we get 2,500 times 5 times 1. And so that is 12,500 joules of work. And that is positive, positive. That's not the direction, it's just a positive number um, from the earth on the piano. So let's look at the next one. Work by um, tension force two. <clears throat> So there are two different ways to do this. I'm gonna do it maybe the easier way. So if we're looking at the angle between the force and the displacement, that is 90 degrees plus 45 degrees, which is equal to 135 degrees. Okay, so the angle is 135 degrees. And therefore the work done by tension two on the piano is 
the abs like the magnitude of that force, so it's 1295 newtons. When you take the magnitude, you don't care which direction it is. Um, the distance that is the displacement, so five meters, and then the cosine of 135 degrees. If we type that all into the calculator, make sure your calculator is in degree mode. <laughs> um, mine is, that's good. We get um, negative 4,579 joules of work. Okay, so does it make sense that it's negative? Well, the displacement is down and this tension force has a component that's like to the left and a component up. And the component to the left doesn't matter because it's at 90 degrees, but this part does matter. So it, because this part that is actually doing work is up, whereas the displacement is down, we expect a negative work for this force. Okay. Finally, let's do this last one. I can make this smaller, make room. Sorry, I'm making it teenier and teenier. The work by tension force one. So for this one, the angle is even bigger. It's 90 degrees plus 60 degrees, which is uh, 150 degrees. So the work done by tension one on the piano is the magnitude, which is 1830 newtons times the five meter displacement times the cosine of 150 degrees. And when you plug all that in your calculator, you get 1830 times five times cosine 150. And that gives negative, okay, so this one's also negative, 7,924 joules of work. Okay, so the network, the network done, network, this is the same thing as the net force dotted with the displacement, but we just did them all one at a time, is equal to 12,500 joules minus 4,579 joules minus 7,924 joules. And when you take that all together, minus 4579 minus 7924, that is equal to minus three joules. Okay, so what does that mean exactly? That's well, probably round off error. Honestly, if I'd kept if I kept all the little bits, it might have been closer. But so basically, in terms of the large amounts of work done, the network done on the piano is about zero joules. This means they're trying to lower it at constant speed between the people pulling up and the earth pulling down, it's not changing speed because the work done on the system is very close to zero.